Yes, uh, this is Randy over in customer service. Yes, Randy. I've got a question for you. A customer calls, they're a little irritable, they maybe get a little vulgar. What's your reaction? Well, uh, you try to try and calm them down if you can. I mean, listen to them. Then what do you do? Well, if they're using vulgarities, that you, I mean, you don't have to take abuse. That's correct. You must let her know that, you know, um, she needs to, you know, try and find out what the problem is. What is the problem? Well, let's uh, do a case scenario. Okay. A person calls, they haven't gotten their order in time. Oh, yeah. And they're expecting it. Of course. Let's say it's for their birthday. <laughs> yes. And they're a little upset because they didn't get what they needed. I know. What's your reaction? Well, you apologize, of course. And uh, hopefully it's going postal so you can say that uh, it's coming postal so we, you know, the postal can be delayed uh, because of the weather. You know, you try and calm them as much as possible. Um, there are no guarantees in life, you know. And people who think that they are, you know, they're being misled. And we just got to let them know on or by. It can be, you know, slightly longer. What? What? Do you tell them there's no guarantees in life? No, I'd like to, though. No, of course not. No, we all would like to, wouldn't we? <laughs> yes, we would. I mean, no. some of these people call you think they're just idiots. Well, they're lonely. I find a lot of them, and they want conversation. They want to yell at someone, and you just let them vent, you know, as much as possible. As long as they don't, you know, throw any vulgar at you, uh, you know, you don't need to sit there and take that. Uh, or you let them know that, ma'am, if you'll calm down, I'll get your supervisor. It's like metaphorically, you just let them beat you to a bloody pulp. Well, kind of, you know, but not, not abusively. You know, you don't need to, if they're swearing at you, you let them know that you don't need to take this, and when they calm down, the police call back. And you can, you can even moderately humiliate them. Well, moderately, as long as they don't realize, and a lot of them don't, when you're, you know, but you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be nasty. We can't afford to be nasty. We just say, you could say a sarcastic joke, maybe, if they are... No, no, it's not too good to be sarcastic if you're being monitored. That will go against you. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Let's say someone calls. This is another case scenario. All right. A person calls. They're speaking with you on the phone. And they're upset because they're worried that there's a burglar outside. What do you do? This is a hard one. That's not your problem. I suggest they hang up immediately and call 911. But let's say they called you and they see the burglar outside. What do you do? Uh, again, I suggest you hang up and call 911 because I'm in Florida. I don't know where you are. There's nothing I can do. You can't do anything, so the quicker you are off the I'm in mortal danger right now. What do you do? You're in mortal danger. You called 911, honey. That's, that's the best we can do with that one. We can't, uh, we're, we're not God. We can't, uh, you know, apprehend him, the burglar and uh, send him off to jail. But we're all God in a certain way, wouldn't you say? Uh, we all a spark of God, not uh, God himself, no. I wouldn't say that. We didn't start the fire. Of course we didn't start the fire, but our ancestors were a part of it, so uh, let's do what we can to uh, try to defuse the situation, shall we? What's your religious background? I don't have that on the file. Of course you wouldn't. Uh, there is none. I'm not religious at all. I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. I think that's all you need. That, that's beautiful. Okay, let's get back to business. Someone calls. Something's happened inside of them to make them sad. Why are they sad? Number one, we're not psychiatrists, so we would never try to diagnose anyone or anything that came through the line, you know, so uh, you just uh, let them know that you suggest they call their helpline because there is one in every state. In a way, we're all psychiatrists. Well, you don't want to play um, chair psychology here at work. We don't have time. We're, time is money here, and that's, what we're aim that's our aim, and that's what we're after. We, we're here to take orders and to place orders and to clarify orders that are gone by the wayside.
in a way, it's taking advantage of the weak to make the corporate America grow stronger. Well, that's survival of the fittest. I'm sorry? Survival of the fittest. That's right. It's survival of the fittest. Right. We must crush them financially. We manipulate them on the television, then they call and we crush them financially. Well, now they have an option. Copy it, I'm sure. And they, the buyer beware, you know, they don't have to order. Well, it's, that's right. They do have an option. You know what the option is? What? Suffer or suffer. And why should we suffer? Do you know what I mean? No, I don't. Let me give you another example. There's a good man by the name of Adolf Hitler who once said, which means the lower, the lower or not the higher. Do you understand what that means? The lower or not the higher? Yes. I think it's pretty uh, simplistic. It is very, but you know where the essence of wisdom is? Please tell me. Simplicity. Mm. I agree with that. Exactly. And that's what it's about. You, you, you're doing an excellent job. Your superior calls to ask you a few questions. You're very kind to answer those questions because you understand about following orders. Is that right? I don't do it very well, but I understand the system, yes. And that's what it comes down to, following orders of your superiors. Uh, there you go with superiors because I think there's only one superior. I don't like the term superior. Um, oh, you can call it what you like. Exactly. It's just, you know, terms. Uh, but, uh, yes, I think when you're in the workplace, uh, this is what they want, this is what you offer, and then this is what you do. Sure. That's, and it goes into life, for instance. Exactly. Yes. I'm not proud of it. It's just uh, I'm not a millionaire, so what do you do? I'm sorry? You're not a millionaire, so what do you do? You work. That's right. You work for your money. You work for your money. And you obey rules. Exactly. And you follow laws. Right. And you rise up in power. Perhaps. Well, if Lucifer's with you. Well, now, that's debatable. Well, we don't have to call it the powers of darkness, do we? We don't have to label it anything now, I suppose. I'm sorry? I don't think labels matter one way or the other. You can call it whatever you like. This is the age of enlightenment. We are entering an age of wisdom. Yes, we are. We're in there. Thanks to the powers of darkness. So I take it that you're a Lucifer uh, disciple? Yes, I am a disciple of the Dark Lord. Yeah. Why? Oh, it's, but I don't like the, I'm bored. Why? Well, the important thing here is not really to get into religious matters, but let, but to understand about our position in society. Okay. So you don't want to answer why. Or you can't answer why. Well, we're a grinding machine of oppression here. Grinding machine of oppression. And you work for us. I'm sorry? I work for Lucifer. No, you work for the for home shopping. Yes. It's like one gigantic crack rock and all of society are taking hits off of it. <laughs> Man. That's what we're looking at. Huh? And you're a gear in the machine. I am. I feel it too. So what are you doing after work? You have to, what do you do? Anything I want to, I'm of age. What do you mean? Exactly that. You're a consenting adult. Exactly. Anyway, I was just thinking after work we might go for a ride to smoke some crack. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for the invite, but uh, I don't indulge. Make bite? Mm. I've got everything I need. Well, I understand. I just wanted to see. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Hey, one more question. Surely. Uh, you sh what do you think about after work driving around just what, seeing the sights? Uh, I can't deny because I uh, have other plans. Gonna party? Yes. I'm sorry? Party down with the Dark Lord? <laughs> 
I have a problem with the Dark Lord. Uh, we don't have to call it that. Let's just call it Pan for the sake of new ageness. No, no, I, I, uh, I respect the power that it has. Uh, it's very powerful and uh, very present. Uh, it's just that uh, some are going to be uh, see things one way and some are going to see things the other way. So. Well, you just got to obey the flame. I suppose. Uh, Inside of you. Yeah. I suppose. Uh, I mean, some people go and string up kites. Some people string up people. Yeah. That's a big 10-4. Big 10-4 there. Mm-hmm. Well, listen. Uh, may the force be with you. Well, you keep obeying rules. Keep up the good work. I'll see you around. Okay. Good night. Good night.